When I was in New York, I traveled back and forth between uh, Utica, New York, and Detroit via Amtrak. And uh, I could say on probably a half a dozen occasions, uh, one one time I was over eight hours late, and the, all of the other times I was late, it was by like three hours or more. So when they decide they're going to be late, boy, they fucking knock it out of the park. Uh, is, are we sure that the railroad industry isn't run by chicks? Uh, it could be. Uh, just, just question. That chick time thing. You know, every <laughs> chick working on that train you add fifteen minutes to your arrival. And before you know it, you're four hours fucking late. <laughs> yeah, we would drop you off at the station while the leaves are burning off the brake pads, but I might break a nail. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, Mur Murphy if you shows really, up. If you really knew who was running the railroads, it's far worse than a chick, man. <sighs> I imagine. Democrats? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing well, is. Well, let's just put it this way. It's full of diversity hours. Yeah. Oh, that explains I'll say everything. no more, yeah. But, like, for instance, wow. traveling between New York State and Michigan, there was a choke point over a bridge. And there was a couple times I was stuck there, you know, just, you know, thumbjacking my shit box, <laughs> doing nothing for, you know, two, three hours as a never-ending line of freight trains were coming the other way. Good times. Yeah. 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 It's and, and I talked to some of the people that work there and they're like, hey, yeah, the tracks are in terrible condition. You know, oh my it, listen, it, yep. and I mean when I was in those train stations, it was literally a hive of scum and villainy from Star Wars. <laughs> I, I, I just couldn't believe it. You were talking earlier about the class one railroads and specifically there's a lot of shit going on in there in terms of like safety, and I've heard that a lot of it like stems out of Illinois, like that's like true. where it kind of all joins together. That's like a big source of it's where the hub. problems are. Yeah. yeah, Chicago. What they have? What three big rail yards in and around Chicago? If I'm wrong, and I'm just gonna say shocked that the big problem is a Democrat-run state. You know, listen, with Beetlejuice as the mayor of Chicago, I can guarantee you, if I went down there the, to the, Chicago and walked, I could. Breach their security, wander all over the place. It it, it is it, it's a travesty. It should not happen. Yeah. Ah, oh, I'm just getting spun up here. <laughs> when we vote, when we voted on this contract, uh, the deadline for us as rail workers was November twentieth. Uh, out of seven different unions on the railroad. Because each individual job that you do for the railroad has its own union. Uh, the maintenance away, those, those are the guys that work on the track maintenance of the, the track. They repair the track. They voted no on their contract. The signal guys, the signal guys are the guys that work on railroad crossing lights and gates and stuff like that. And the traffic signals that we drive the trains over. Uh -huh. uh, they voted no on their contract. Uh yeah, but I bet you ten to one there's no cola in there. Well, that's exactly what happened with those guys because uh, they 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 work out of town a lot. They uh -huh. when I say work out of town, they they stay out of town for up up to eight days at a time, and they could be anywhere from two hundred to four hundred miles away from their home. Uh huh. And they get they get per diem. Well, they voted no on the contract mainly because they were trying to take away their per diem. Yeah. For, for what? What the fuck are so they? So why thinking? wouldn't you? Why why would you vote yes for that? That's well, the I, ma major part of their salary. I, but the thing is, if you take away the per diem, you're basically removing about thirty percent of the person's paycheck just to pay for room, board, and food when he's away from. That's exactly right. Yeah, That's fuck exactly that. Right because they they have to they have to check in the hotels and motels yeah. uh, and stuff like that. So yeah, that per diem is how they even do their job. Yeah. Well, listen, I. I when I used to get sent on missions or schools, I got paid per diem. You know, unless right. the, if the installation had a shell hole and a barracks, then I stayed there. But if they didn't, I was on the economy and I got a per diem. Right. And listen, there's no way as a soldier I would be able to afford uh, traveling as much as I did in regards to uh, the military and all of the, the crap they had me doing if they didn't pay for my per diem. Right. I just couldn't do it. 
Right. So, I mean, like I said, you got the, the, the 30 pound brain, gr- evil, greedy motherfucker asshats who, who want to, you know, save yet more money. And they're not actually realizing that their industry is going to implode if they don't unfuck this ASAP. All, all of this, all of this is stemming from what the railroad started uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic, which was uh, it was called Precision Schedule Railroading, mm-hmm. and uh, it's the acronym PSR. And basically, all that is is if your your viewers that can look this up, uh, but there's a term called scavenger capitalism and basically is what it is is what it amounts to is basically major layoffs personnel cuts and wherever they can trim fat they're going to trim fat Mm -hmm. and over the past two two years they have literally been laying off as many jobs as they can and you've everybody's heard the term do more with less Uh uh-huh yep that's corporate America today. Yeah, and guess oh, yeah. what? Uh, there's two words for that: mismanagement. Yep. Well, That's it's all about word. it's all about maximum profits and keeping the shareholders happy. Now, yeah. now listen, I, I understand. You know, I, 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 listen, I'm a capitalist. I believe in capitalism. All right. With that being said, though, you have to be able to project into the future and go. You know what? If I lay all these people off and all of this turns around, I am not going to have enough people to handle what I have going on. So you people that are here, you're going to work extra, extra hard until we get caught up. But the thing is, they never catch up because these people get used to being slaved to death and not getting compensated for it. No, I 100% agree with you on that as far as capitalism goes. Everybody knows what capitalism is. Uh, but when you start laying off employees to the point where you're doing it as you're operating a billion dollar business on a shoestring budget and that shit's you, can't, happening, you, yeah. you, you can't even perform your daily functions as a company because you don't have the personnel, it, it doesn't take long for it to catch up and start biting you in the ass. Yep. Like, all right. I got and that, that's exactly what we're facing right now. Well, here, here's an example. Back when I used to do uh, mortgages and financial planning, I got hired on at this one company to do VA loans, and I did VA loans for half the country. Then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, Pop, we want you to train people on how to do VA loans. And I'm literally like, uh, Pete was my boss. I'm like, can you see my, uh, can I see my uh, job duties and titles? He hands it to me, and I'm like, uh, nowhere in here does it say that I have to be an instructor or teacher. So if I'm not getting compensated for doing two jobs, I'm only doing one job. That's it. And it, it's quite common for somebody to go get into a company, start working, then the, the guy gets sick, hurt, laid off, and then you're doing his job. But they don't raise your pay. Yeah, Exactly. And like I have a buddy of mine who's doing four fucking people's jobs now. Yeah. Like I said, that's the new corporate America. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, it's been like it's that. The, I don't. I don't see it getting any better. No, I, I, you're right. It's been corporate America since I think about second term Reagan, when he was yeah. too demented, and then eventually the, the cronies around him started <laughs> running shit for him, and and that's when you started seeing you know like the cuts instead of expansions, and everybody was just worried about their shareholders, didn't give a flying fuck. Clinton came in, globalism made it a thousand times worse, yeah. and we see where we're headed now. Yeah, like literally, if the trains quit running, it's going to be absolute pandemonium. Yeah. When you have well, you've been saying for just, years that at any given time, this country is seventy-two hours away from havoc. Uh huh. The railroad system is how you do that. Yep. 24 hours. Yeah. 24 hours. That's all it takes. 24 hours. When people Man. don't have clean drinking water because there's no chlorine at the water treatment plant. Mm-hmm. That's going to get that's spicy. What, that's what it starts off right there. That's where it kicks off. Then the food spicy. comes next. Yep. yep. It's going to get spicy. Very just spicy. To get, just to give you an example. Look, I love truck drivers. We all do. You know, we've been seeing uh, during the pandemic of all the the drama that the truck drivers were having to go through through with the vaccinations and all that. 
everybody loves truck drivers. I love truck drivers because if it wasn't for the truck drivers, the shit wouldn't get on the shelves. My dad was a truck driver. Yep. Exactly. But the thing but is, I'm getting, what people I'm, are overlooking when you see a freight train going down the track. Let's just say that freight train's 15,000 feet long. He's got 165 to 175 cars on that train. That's 165 to 175 trucks. Yep. We are the rail industry. We are the first link in the supply chain inside the United States borders. Yep. We are the first people to touch the freight. The truck drivers are the second. I got you. No, no I'm not arguing with that at all. It's absolutely true. Yep. Well, my thing is this, is... Uh, Making it bigger and having the government come in is not going to make it better. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, no. I mean, just like I was saying earlier about Amtrak, a lot of people don't even know that the federal government owns Amtrak. And the reason why the federal government owns Amtrak is 1978. They were fixing to go bankrupt. And the government uh, used the term, well, they're too big to fail. Y'all remember that term yep. during Obama? Shocker. Yep. Well, that term was used in 1978 with Amtrak. So the federal government bought out Amtrak because they are too important and too big to fail. The United States government still owns Amtrak today because nobody wants to buy a passenger train railroad because it's not profitable. Hmm. Every year, Amtrak loses money. Every year. They're just like the United the US States Post Office. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You're absolutely correct. They're just like the United States Post Office. And your tax dollars is funding that passenger train to run up and down the track every day. You're buying that diesel for that train to run. So why is the American public even having to buy tickets for that train? Your tax dollars is paying for that train. You should be able to get on that train for free. Damn. Well, in a perfect Star Trek world where I can just push a button and get all the free food and shit I want, yeah. you could do that. But in the real world of today, where you got to pay for shit, it's not possible. Yeah. Right. But my thing is this. If Amtrak is losing money, it's because they just don't have enough asses and seats. That well, that's it right there alone. Is they they they're not making a profit because they cannot get enough people to ride trains. Because, like I was saying, the only place that Amtrak is actually profitable is up on the northeastern seaboard, yep. yeah. where hardly anybody owns cars. Well, where, where where I live in Texas, everybody has a car, and if you need to go to point A to point B, you drive. Yeah. Yeah, listen, there was many, many times when I was traveling around by train where I had like four people in a whole car. Unless it's around Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's Eve. It really, or or like 4th of July maybe, but I, I never really rode the tracks on, during any of the other. Uh, it's eight, mostly winter, right? Mostly winter. Yeah. But other than that, you know, um, yeah, those, there was a lot of empty seats. Yeah, and it, I'll tell you this, man. If you're going to jump on a passenger train, uh, don't make any plans that involve being on time. Yes, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're playing Russian roulette every time yeah. you step on one of those motherfuckers. Well, I will say this, though. Uh, the sleeper car, that is the cat's ass right there. Hmm. Because you go, like, there was a couple times I went down to Florida from Michigan, got the sleeper car, two days. Just came out to eat, went back and hibernated, <laughs> you know, and, w and just did my own thing. Yeah, what else are you going to do? Yeah. But, you know, other than that, you know, when I had to, when I rode coach, it was scum and villainy. <laughs> no, oh, listen, like I'm literally stopped at the uh, train station in Ohio. Yeah. And I'm waiting for the bus to bring me into Detroit. Oh, I, I know exactly which stop you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and it's, a, it's like a four-hour wait. Oh. So I'm sitting there, and like these three guys come in, and they start asking people for money. And, and they're big dudes; they're like strong arming people. I'd be like, you know, if if I had money, would I be riding the fucking train? Well, I mean, hell out of here. They literally go to this this Indian couple. They're from India. Like the woman had the dot. I think and, that lights up when the coffee's ready. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you have twenty dollars. The guy like's pulling out his wallet. I'm like, hey, 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 <laughs> hey, this is ridiculous. You're shaking down everyone here. We're going to get the fucking cops in here and fuck you up. <laughs> like, What's well, not your business? He wants to give me the money. I'm like, dude, this is a fucking shakedown. Mm -hmm. All right. And who do you think they're going to believe? The guy in the uniform or <laughs> you? <laughs> get the bum, fuck bum, out bum. of here. Bow. Yeah. And and that happened all the time. Hmm? Most of the time I didn't get involved. 
But when it's happening right next to me, I'm like, okay. All right. All right. All right. But it, like, and, and, well, the one in Ohio. Yeah. One time I was, uh, I didn't go one week. I was doing, uh, at I was in Wisconsin, Fort McCoy. They had a shooting right out in front of the train station. Uh, you know, just s- yeah. scum and villainy. The scum and villainy. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah. And yeah, never like just virtually no security. Damn. Yeah. Like I could I could walk on there with a Christmas gra- uh, wrapped bazooka. <laughs> I could have it on my shoulder. It's it wrapped and there's like <laughs> there, there could be like bows on it. And what's this? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. This is my uh long range uh evaporator. Yes. <laughs> I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for Supporter Sundays, go to redonkulous.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the Meat Gazer box.